Okay, can I go? Can we go to the first slide, please? Okay, now let me sort of summarize for you really quickly. Uh, three weeks ago, this is our third sermon in the series on the last days. Um, the, the phrase uh, last days has the, in these sermons, has the meaning of the seven years preceding the second coming of Jesus Christ. That generally is a period right there that we're talking about. Now, I'm quite aware that Hebrews, uh, the opening chapter of Hebrews, defines the last days as a period of time beginning with the resurrection of Jesus Christ all the way through up on your slide, point C, the second coming of Jesus Christ. But in general uh, discussion, in general um, uh, um, communication relative to the end of time just before the second coming, we, we frequently will use the phrase last days to refer to this seven-year period of time, the seven years preceding the second coming of Jesus Christ, okay? Now, second slide. Okay, here's what last week and, and the week before, here's, here's, what, here's what we did. We described the Last days, the seven years preceding the seven, the, 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 the seven years preceding the second coming of Jesus Christ as the 70th week. Okay? That phrase comes from an interpretation of Daniel 9. We're not going to go back there. But pretty much what we're talking about is this seven year period of time. Now, um, what we have said so far is this that this seven year period of time is broken up into through two periods of three and a half years. In the very middle of that three and a half years, what happens is the church of Jesus Christ is raptured, okay? Now, next Sunday, we're going to talk more about that specific event. But for right now, what we're talking about is this part is what we talked about last Sunday, the wrath of God. That is the last three and a half years of the seven-year period of time, all right? Now, what we have introduced is a concept of what we might call the pre, a pre-wrath tribula, a, a pre-wrath rapture, okay? Here's what that means. That you and I are raptured right here before the outpouring of the wrath of God. Why, why can we say that? Because the Scripture says that the wrath of God was laid on the back of Jesus Christ, okay? And so because the wrath of God was laid on the back of Jesus Christ, this period of time right here, this last three and a half years is a time that is um, beyond comparison of any other period of time in human history, okay? That worst of that period, we do not experience because we are raptured before the wrath of God is poured out on humanity. Now, uh, let me explain something. Notice that we have a seven-year period of time. What, what I have talked about is, is the rapture in the midpoint of the seven years. That, that is one interpretation. There is another interpretation, and many believers, very conservative, very strong, mature believers believe that the rapture takes place right here in the beginning of the seven-year period of time, okay? They, in other words, they move this from here to here before the beginning of the seven-year period of time. And, the, and the, the reason is because, once again, we're not subject to the wrath of God. So they interpret the entire seven-year period of time as the period of the wrath of God, all right? Now, I don't agree with that. And I can't give you all the reasons, but I'm going to show you one reason, one very important reason today why I don't support that and why I don't believe the Scripture supports that, okay? So we're talking about a pre-wrath time. They also call it a pre-wrath uh, rapture. But instead of doing having the rapture at the beginning of the seven years, they have it at the midpoint of the seven years. Now, here's what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about today is that the Bible describes a spiritual battle that occurs between Satan and Christianity. That, and I'll show, in a moment, I'll give you some details of that battle. The, the, um, that's the first thing we're going to talk about. The second thing we're going to talk about is what I've introduced in prior weeks as the one world religion. 
Okay, I'm going, to end, I'm going to show you where that comes from in Revelation 13. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that relates to the spiritual battle that Satan wages against Christians. Okay, and then hopefully if I have time, I'm going to show you how we prepare. Okay, now, okay, go to Revelation 12 with me, and we're going to pick up in verse 17. And before I read, I need to sort of tell you what the, what's in chapter 12. In, in Revelation chapter 12, here's what happens. A sign appears in heaven. Okay, a sign is something God tells us because he wants us to know what's getting ready to happen. And in that sign, a woman appears. A woman has uh, um, 12, she has, she has 12 stars, uh, and she, she's clothed with the sun, and the moon is at her feet. And so the question first that we, we have to address is, who is the woman? All right, now... We, we don't have time to go into the reasons for it, but the general interpretation is that the woman represents Israel, the covenant people of God, all right? The woman in Revelation 12 is about to give birth to a male child. That male child is Jesus Christ, all right? And the dragon is Satan in Revelation 12. And what the dragon tries to do is kill the child so that he is either not born or he kills the child so that the child's mission is not able to be accomplished. What happens, of course, is Jesus is born. Satan is not able to stop what Jesus Christ does. And so here's what Satan does. Satan begins, because he's, he's angry, because Satan is angry at what Christ does, what Satan does is he begins a war. And you can read that in the 12th chapter. We're picking up in the 17th verse, all right? The 17th verse of Revelation 12, we find the following. And the dragon, who is that? And Satan, the dragon, was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Now, if you happen to have one of these handouts, all right, we are on now the second page. We're on the slide uh, in the middle of the page that begins what happens to the saints before the rapture, Okay. And Revelations 12, 17 introduces the, the concept that Satan wages a war against the woman who is Israel and those who hold to the testimony of Jesus. All right, let me read it again. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went off to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Now, here's what this is saying. What I've done this week is I've added another line to your, to your slide. It's the black line. And what the black line represents is the wrath of Satan. It's the wrath of Satan that is depicted in the 12th chapter of Revelation. Now, what it says is that, that the dragon went off to make war with, with the woman and those who hold to the testimony of Jesus. So the wrath of Satan, see, the question becomes, number one, what kind of battle is this? Number two, when, was this, when does this battle begin? Here's when the battle begins, because the battle is waged against those who hold to the testimony of Jesus, who would be who? Christians. 